families. Lincoln, Nissan explores a new frontier, and Lisa Vero samples new technologies. So come drive with us next. Television's original automotive magazine. Your host for Motor Week, John Davis. Well, hello and welcome again to Motor Week. We're glad to have you with us. For many years, American luxury cars were best known for their sheer size and excessively opulent interiors. Only in the last decade have they also been recognized for world-class performance and technology. And in 1998, the latest American luxury car to benefit from today's advances is also one of those best known for yesterday's excesses. It's the Lincoln Town Car. The success of Lincoln's new streamlined flagship depends on both pleasing the Lincoln loyal as well as attracting younger buyers with an eye for sophisticated looks and a taste for world-class luxury. And the almost completely redesigned 1998 Lincoln Town Car delivers on both counts and starts by shedding its dated boxy look and nearly four inches from its overall length in favor of a sleeker, leaner appearance. Styling that makes the town car look right at home in the 90s while still remaining distinctively a Lincoln. The large traditional grille has been replaced by a smaller chrome shield that also eliminates the old stand-up foot ornament. Its thick vertical bars impart an air of elegance and practicality, while the new wraparound headlights front a profile that is more athletic and fluid than its predecessor. A higher, slightly upswept belt line flows from the massive hood to the rear of the car, where it merges gracefully with a softer, less angular C-pillar that has also jettisoned its signature opera window. The classic vertical tail lamps remain with a fresh treatment that provides a defining edge to the rounded, copious rear while the bold, heavily chrome surround that encompasses the backup lights and license plate signals unapologetic Lincoln luxury. But the very retro door handles look as though they could be equally at home on Grandma's refrigerator. Just behind those funky door handles, however, lies the focal point of the town car's mission statement, an interior that is uncompromising in both its capacity and accommodation. The large linear dash follows exterior styling by adopting a softer, more curvaceous form. Updated instruments feature new analog gauges that are centered by a large, easy-to-read speedometer, while just to the right is now the almost mandatory digital message center. The broad leather bench seat has been redesigned with thicker seat cushions and improved side bolsters and lumbar support. Also new is the 40-20-40 seating configuration that provides ample room for a third front seat occupant. On Signature and Cartier models, the easily identifiable power seat controls have been moved to the door for greater convenience. A long arm is needed, however, to reach the buttons that operate the AM-FM cassette CD-ready stereo, and the CD changer is located rather inconveniently in the trunk. It's not quite as far to the climate controls, but surprisingly there are no separate settings for the passenger side, and they can be rather tricky to get to when the cup holders are in use. When folded down, the broad armrest offers loads of storage for CDs and a cellular phone. That available cell phone also includes a mic on the steering column for hands-on-the-wheel operation. Rear seat passengers continue to revel in the warehouse-like space and plush seating offered by town cars of old. But new air ducts improve the environment. Further back is another Lincoln staple, a cavernous trunk measuring 20.6 cubic feet. While smaller than last year, it's still one of the biggest available on any sedan. Propelling this luxury cruiser is the familiar 4.6 liter single overhead cam V8. A single exhaust version produces 205 horsepower and 280 pound-feet of torque. With the addition of dual exhaust, horsepower is bumped up to 220 with torque increasing to 290. Both engines now include fail-safe cooling, coil-on plug ignition, and 100,000 miles between tune-ups. But the most significant mechanical changes to the 98 town car lie under the powertrain. And to take full measure of them, one must slide behind the wheel and hit the road. Anchoring the town car's body is a re-engineered full perimeter frame with 10 bi-directional body mounts and redesigned front and rear crush zones. Lincoln got suspension help from Jaguar. They helped adapt the Watts linkage to the town car's solid rear axle suspension. It improves both ride and cornering stability. 
and reduces squat and lift under heavy acceleration and braking, aiding a very respectable 0 to 60 time of 8.5 seconds. Tighter steering response and upgraded twin tube shocks help eliminate the floaty boaty feel associated with past town cars, all without compromising the plush ride that Lincoln is famous for. And in a first for Lincoln, a town car signature touring sedan is being offered. With monotube shocks, a lower rear axle ratio, and new Chrome Tech 16-inch aluminum wheels, it's targeted at younger buyers or buyers still young at heart. Stopping power has been greatly improved due to a new twin piston caliper design and beefier rotors that have grown in diameter and thickness. New 16-inch wheels and Michelin tires are now standard to accommodate the larger brakes. Although given the targeted market segment, we think run-flat tires would also be appropriate. Pricing is very appropriate, however, with the entry-level Executive Series priced at $38,500. The popular signature model starts at $40,150, with the top-of-the-line Cartier based at $42,500. Combined with its stylish new looks, these cars shouldn't be lounging around the showroom for long. So with an updated look that is now thoroughly modern and a suspension package that previous Lincoln owners could only dream about, we'd have to say this is definitely not your granddaddy's Lincoln. And for that, we are extremely grateful.